Senate begins work on the 2022 to 2024 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. Also, Benway lawmakers in the National Assembly throw their weight behind Governor Samuel at home, who will speak to the lawmaker representing Guare East, Guare West Federal Constituency. This is the Hala Chambers. I am Tijesu Adiri. The Nigerian Senate commenced a three-day public hearing on the 2022 to 2024 medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. The event is conducted by the Senate's Joint Committee on Finance, National Planning, Foreign and Local Debts and others with heads of ministries, departments and agencies in attendance. The interactive session exposed some areas of concern that had to do with increasing government's revenue base, block leakages, and the sustainability of the projections made for the smooth implementation of the 2022 budget. What must be done before the president will go ahead and present his budget before the National Assembly? The president has submitted before the National Assembly the medium-term expenditure framework for 2022. Uh, we do realize that uh, there is need for us to exit this ultimately. The Petroleum Industry Act has made provision for an ultimate exit from this new subsidy environment, but that decision has not been made, and there has got to be an implementation process under the PIA, which the National Assembly you know, graciously uh, passed uh, as a bill of the National Assembly. We are working on it, distinguished senators. We will uh, we'll exit this ultimately, but there is really no time frame on, on this. In the past three years, we have been working with the Ministry of Finance and gladly finally secured three mobile scanners which would be deployed in the next couple of uh, weeks. They are on the high sea as of today and by estimation we are expecting the two. Joining me to discuss security concerns in Benue State and the political reactions generated is Honorable Mark Bila representing Guare East, Guare West Federal Constituency in the National Assembly. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you very much. Let's begin with the security situation in your state. What does it look like as we speak? Um, right now in Benue State, let me commend our men and women of the armed forces, the Operation World Stroke, the police, the Air Force, the civil defense, and all other security operatives for sacrificing their time and their lives to protect the citizens of Benway State. The current situation is that the frequency of the attacks has reduced, the number of casualties has also reduced, but there has been no cessation of the killing of our people in Benue State. So there's a sort of a guerrilla style tactic where these herdsmen attack and retreat back to their hideouts and this is something we expect the security operatives to be aware of and to be able to provide a solution for. And this is where we have not been able to satisfactorily see the security operatives intervene in terms of finding a lasting solution to these type of attacks now being perpetrated by the herdsmen. Your governor has been so vocal, making series of allegations against the government at the center, and he has also been criticized for not doing enough to secure the state. Let me correct the impression that my governor is making allegations or is attacking the president. These allegations are spurious and baseless, especially considering the very unfortunate statement by my boss and former governor of Venice, our leader and elder, Senator George Akume, Minister for Interior Affairs, who used very 
unbecoming invectives and language against the governor. It's important to point out that whatever the governor postulates in public, whatever his statements he makes is with the backing, the full backing of the people of Benue State. He doesn't just speak as an individual. This is not partisan. This is not nobody should politicize this issue. This is an issue that everybody in the country is conversant with and aware of. We are no longer safe in Nigeria. The governor has given a voice to the voiceless, to the people of Nigeria and Benue State, which is his primary constituency. So what he says are not allegations. He states facts about what is transpiring in the country at the moment. The fact that the APC government of President Muhammad Buhari has failed in the area of security and several other areas is not open to conjecture. It is a fact. And that as enshrined in section 14 2B of the constitution is a primary role of government. So the governor is only stating the fact. The important thing for us to do as a people is to be able to stand by the truth and speak truth to power. And those in position of authority should be able to tolerate and accommodate criticism. This government has shown itself not to be democratic in the manner in which it clamps down of freedom of expression, which is our fundamental right as enshrined in the constitution. The naval officer who spoke very openly and still didn't even reveal some details because of his training was still invited by the DIA to come and answer questions. Why is that? It is our fundamental right. It's the governor's fundamental right to speak on behalf of his people and express his reservations. There are allegations of corruption and mismanagement of security funds against the governor, yet you are sticking out your neck for him. I always like to say the onus on anyone who makes accusations is to prove them. And for the fourth estate of the realm, the media should also be able to carry out investigative reporting to ascertain the veracity or otherwise of these very spurious allegations. Once again, you are referring to allegations made by Senator George Akume, himself a former governor, whose conduct will also be open to scrutiny very soon, since he has decided to want to wade into the issue of handling of security votes, but that's an issue for another day. The important thing with regards to these allegations is the fact that they are mere allegations that are unproven. And considering the circumstances in Nigeria today, even if those funds they claim are released are true. So first of all, let me categorically state that they are mere allegations. There's no iota of truth in them. That is what we recognize. There's no mismanagement of security funds. In fact, whatever we receive is insufficient to tackle the insecurity that is pervading the state and the nation as a whole. In particular with the state, if you do your investigations, you will discover that the allocation, the monthly allocation to Benue State is infinitesimal compared to the bill and the expenditure the state requires. And the fact that the state presently is single-handedly handling the issue and the sustenance of IDPs, who are almost 2 million in Benue at the moment, is cause for concern out of the same meager resources that this government gets. Because the security we're referring to is not only for the other indigents who live in their homes, but also for the IDPs in whatever locations they are. So I will simply answer by saying that we are supporting our governor 100%, giving him a vote of confidence, because whatever has been said are mere allegations that are unproven. And we are also aware of the meager resources the state government gets. And we are also fundamentally aware that whatever is currently even being received and applied for security in the state is even insufficient to take care of the plethora of issues 
that we're handling at the moment. How well is the open grazing law working in the state? We appreciate the people of Benue for of the act in the state. We also are 100% in support of it. It happens to be that the livestock guard, Senator George Akume, is asking for the disbandment of uh, the ones saddled with the implementation of the law since the security agencies themselves have, from my own understanding at the moment, refused to fully cooperate with the state in the implementation. And that is something that increases the clamor for state police. It appears as if when state governments enact laws, our security agencies, because they are controlled at the center, do not recognize that those laws are legitimate legislation. We call ourselves a federation, but we do not appreciate the powers of federating units, which the states are. A state government can enact a law after passing through constitutional processes as indicated in our constitution in their various houses of assembly. It behoves on security agencies to realize that this is now formal legislation that they, even though they are federal security agencies, are required to uphold. But this is not the case, obviously, because this legislation is something that is not supported by the current government because of the, 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 the president's uh, bias in this regard. There are claims that part of the state have been taken over by headsmen while the indigents have been displaced. Shouldn't that bother your governor the more? So this is why the governor is unrelenting in stating the facts to the president and calling his attention to his ineffectual leadership of the country with regards to this issue. This is precisely the reason why the governor has been raising these issues in the public domain. Right now, in certain parts of the state and certain local governments, some wards have been deserted by bona fide citizens of those areas because of these herdsmen who with impunity enter these locations and begin to kill and possess the property of the people. Now, it is important to note when you ask, isn't this of concern to the governor to realize that he has been saying this it does not appear as if the media has been listening. He has been pointing this out. And it is fundamentally the purview of the federal security agencies to handle any incursion in any territory of Nigeria. It is not within the power of a state governor to do so. He has been providing immense support to the security agencies in the state within the limitations of the resources available to the state. And it now behoves on those security agencies to rise up to the occasion and deal with this. And that is why we are wondering how the federal government will allocate over 6 billion for ranching to take care of the president's Keith and Kin in his state, Katsina state, while IDPs in Benue and across other states in the country are wallowing in poverty, unable to feed or have an education. And the 10 billion that was promised by this government since 2018 by the vice president has still not been made available for the rehabilitation and resettlement of IDPs. So even with regards to this issue of certain parts of the state being inhabitable, it is still part of the body language of this federal government not to be perturbed by deploying more security resources to these locations to ensure that the people go back to their homes. This is not 
within the power of a governor to do. He has done what he can do by providing support to the federal agencies who have come to tackle the, this, the uh, issue of uh, insecurity. But this is why everyone should rise up at this point to realize that the need and the clarion call for state police is absolutely justified. A former governor of the state and a serving member of the federal cabinet, who obviously also has a stake in the state, came out to caution the governor against making unsubstantiated claims and in the process called for a state of emergency. What do you have against George Akume and his comments? Like I started by saying, George Akume is my elder, a leader in my state. Uh, my boss, I have immense respect for him, but it is important when, even when an elder goes out of line for him to be cautioned, which is what we as a caucus try to do to caution him. He knows very well the import of calling for emergency rule, and there's absolutely no reason why he should be saying that. Because first of all, as a member of this cabinet, he is indicting himself for ineptitude in being unable to convince the president he claims to be close to from being able to wade into the affairs of his state. He is aware the issues bothering the state are not the handwork of the governor. He is aware and should be aware that the president's Keith and Kin, the Fulani headsmen, are the ones who are perpetrating and perpetuating these atrocities within his state. What has he said or done about that in the last couple of years, only to suddenly come up and say there should be an emergency rule based on what? That is one fundamental issue we have against him. And we also have a grouse with him for the manner. The, pers the same person who was accusing the governor of his statements against the president in himself behaved in an unbecoming manner by making very derogatory utterances and statements against the governor, which were completely unfortunate and disappointing for a person of his status. The governor has also threatened to drag the minister to court over some allegations relating to corruption you actually think that is the right way to go? It is the prerogative of the governor to pursue legal action when his person and his character is being impugned and his person is being defamed in the public. So I can understand with the governor, it is something I myself would do if somebody makes false and spurious allegations against me because it's within my fundamental human rights to do so. But we have given the former governor, Senator George Akume, a leeway by asking him to retract his statements. And I want to go further by saying he is the one that should apologize instead of asking the governor to apologize for not saying anything wrong, but only speaking truth to power. So. If Senator George Akume can seek rapprochement with the governor in this regard, then obviously the governor will have no cause to take that action, but it is within his fundamental human rights to do so when he's being defamed and false allegations are being made against him. Shouldn't we be talking about fighting a common enemy in this case, the bandits, the terrorists, the headers who kill and destroy? I totally agree with you that a united front is what we require to be able to fight this battle at this time. And you will bear witness to the fact that the governor has kept faith with his stance about the issues and has raised them publicly and has raised them to the president for his intervention. He has never joined words with the minister. He has never come against the person of the minister, even though he knows 
the minister is in the government. He has never said, oh, Senator George Akume, why are you a minister and this is happening in our state? No, he has attacked the person. He has confronted the person saddled with the security of this nation, which is the president. And I will take that word back when I said attack. No, he has not attacked. He has approached and appealed to the president with regards to this issue and has been forthright about speaking the truth about the circumstance, which is what has not been acceptable to this government. So a united approach is what we seek, and that is what the governor has pursued in his several stakeholder meetings. A few days ago, he had another one where he still highlighted the issues, and these stakeholder meetings encompass citizens of the state across party lines who are brought to discuss affairs that concern the state. Why is this unfortunate situation being politicized? The politics of it is because the governor has been unrelenting in calling this government to order about their ineptitude and inability to quell the situation. So it is being politicized because the government of President Muhammadu Buhari is averse to criticism, is unable to handle criticism. They are not espousing the freedom of expression. It is a government that has trampled on the fundamental human rights of the people of Nigeria. If the governor had remained in the APC, would you and your colleagues in the PDP have stuck out your necks for him? Obviously, definitely. Um, the good thing is that the records are there. Even while the governor was in the APC, he was speaking against the atrocities being committed against his people, which is why he fell out with the powers that be in the party in the first place. And at that time, like I said, the records are there. We stood by him. I was also in the APC, if you recall, before I left for the PDP. And I also was in support of the governor, I stood by him, and I've stood by him since then because he is standing with the people, defending the rights of his people, which is what I also support and we also support. So it is not a matter of which party affiliation he has. It's a matter of him standing for the truth. And I can tell you, there's some members of his party. That is Senator George Akume's party. There's some members of the APC in Benue who stand with the governor, who support his position, and are totally against the statement of Senator George Akume. The 10 billion naira promise from the federal government, why has that not been fulfilled? My, I can only assume at this moment, so what I would say are my own personal opinions, which are open to conjecture, obviously, but I personally believe that it is a very clear show of lack of interest and concern in the issues bedeviling the people of Benue State, which is why the government has not honored that obligation. And because they, have, they are now playing politics with it, to think that if that money is released to the state, it will enhance the image of the state government of what they would consider to be a PDP government. Unfortunately, this is what is going on in Nigeria at the moment, where it seems resources are better being channeled, apart from the statutory allocations, which they are bound by law to make available to the state governments. If they could, I am sure this administration would even stop such allocations to states that are not APC states, but unfortunately, they are not able to do so. So other issues like additional funding that should be provided to the states, like this 10 billion, are being withheld 
because it is felt that it will enhance the benefit to the state government and the image of the state. And perhaps it will go towards, because part of the uh, expenditure in that funding is supposed to also be to enhance security in those areas. So perhaps there's also the thinking that if that fund is released, it will hinder their access to those places by this headsman who the president with his body language has refused to be able to call to order. It is important to note that these headsmen who are causing havoc in Plateau, in Benue, in Nasarawa, Taraba, several parts of this country have still not been given the right appellation of being called the terrorists that they are. We still keep referring to them as bandits when they have been declared by the United Nations as the fifth most dangerous and prevalent terrorist group in the world. But our Nigerian government, the Buhari government has been unable, but was quick to proscribe IPOP because of their own political interests. So unfortunately, this is the politics that is going on with this administration and posterity will judge them for this. That's our program for this week. You can watch a repeat of the show on Sunday. Also catch up with previous episodes on YouTube. Do not forget to subscribe to TVC News YouTube channel, like and share. Also follow me on all social media platforms to get fresh news and continue the conversation on the Hala Chambers. I am TJ Suadioi. Thank you for watching. See you next week. <music>